All right, before we get into this episode of the Empty Nerds Podcast, we've got to hear from our new sponsor, Shift Hockey. You guys have heard us talk about this already by now, but the boys at Shift Hockey are on a mission to save you in the hockey game. We all know that those big companies that are making sticks, that are putting them on the shelves in all the shops that you go to, are pumping these sticks out for 350 bucks or more a pop. And that is frankly unacceptable. So what the guys at Shift have done is they've gone out to all the best manufacturers, they've done all the research, and they're bringing you a top-of-the-line quality stick without all the bells and whistles, for under 200 bucks, They are literally saving every single person who has ever bought a stick or ever tried to get into the game of hockey, and you need a new twig. Like we say, listen to us loud and clear. Literally stop what you're doing. If you play hockey, you need to get on board with shift hockey. If you are a parent with kids getting into the game, they're getting to that level where they need those nice composite sticks, you need to use shift hockey. If you are a college student, a high school student, or someone like us ripping around in beer league, Every time you break your twig, you can't pay rent. Those days are no longer in the hemisphere for us because what is happening is Shift has come in and saved the day and they're giving you the best stick you can find on the market for a fraction of the price. You use a Shift stick. I don't mean to be hyperbolic, but Shift hockey has quite literally saved my life. It is, I've never had an easier time endorsing something ever, dude. It dude. is, it, get this stick. When you were Save in hundreds of dollars, when you were in Colombia last week and I had to do this by myself, that's exactly what I said. I was like, I've never been happier to, to have a partner uh, and, and talk about a product that I literally use because it's like, I'm not joking. I don't care what you do. Spending $350 on a stick is horseshit. It's insane. It's too much money. And Shift is literally using the exact same materials, same model with frankly a sleeker design. It's a sick looking stick. And they're giving to you for 170 bucks. It's a joke. But what you're even going to get on top of that is when you go to www.shifthockey.com slash netters and then put in that promo code netters, you're going to save 10% on top of the fact that this stick is already cut in half from what you're used to paying. So they're just saving you money left, right, and center. Shift Hockey is the way to go. If you're in the game of hockey, you need a new stick, get on board with this company right now. Save yourself as much money as you could ever imagine. Please, I'm begging you. Begging you. All right. Let's get into this episode. Very excited. We've got an incredible guest this week. Tyler Toffoli joins the podcast, having a career year in Calgary. And he's a career guy, too. Like, in my career. Meeting, <laughs> meeting guys. Tyler Toffoli's in there. You've met a lot of guys, too. I, tons of them. I, it, it happens every day, too. But Tyler Toffoli came in with his wife. Unfortunately, CP wasn't here. He was still traveling abroad. But... Got to hang with Ty and Kat. Had an absolute blast. They're so fucking cool. A uh, little little netters bump, by the way. Ty played last night, day after he was on the pod. Potted a goal back in his old barn in, in L.A., which is always lovely to see. But um, we're going to get into some of our usual stuff before we get into that interview. Uh, first and foremost, for the listeners, CP, how is Columbia? Wow. What a country. <laughs> uh, it was fantastic. I was in Medellin. And Cartagena, uh, I can't pronounce them right. Yeah, clearly. Well, Car Cartagena, I can get closer. Cartagena, they say like Cartagena. That was pretty good. But Medellin, it's like the the L's become like Z's almost. It's like Medellin. 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 No, it's like Medellin. No, it's not even that. Medellin. Though. Yeah, I, that was that. pretty good. Medellin. That was that. that I was... do have a very good Spanish accent. I, trust me, I know. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's such a deep cut inside yeah. joke. Yeah. Uh, 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 but I think that that was it. It's yeah. like a J. It's Medellin. like a Medellin. 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 It's like quicker. Yeah. That's good. Um, that Medellin is more, you know, like the city. Cartagena is like the beach. Uh, both glorious. Put it on your list if you can. Um, favorite food? Favorite drink while you were there? Oh, uh, you know what, Dan? You will relate to this because you know me well. I was expecting. I love Brazilian um, stuff like, uh, like Guarana and like caipirinhas and, mm -hmm. and like some of their food just because chatsky and i was like oh colombia will have a ton of it's also in south america it'll have a ton of brazilian influence but brazilian has all that portuguese like brazilian they speak like brazilian is that portuguese yeah, yeah, yeah. And portugal influence and colombia is spanish so it wasn't at all i was expecting to order drink a million caipirinhas and i had one restaurant had one and i was like oh great um man emily can you look this up there is an a liquor there that is um unique super to popular Columbia, and it 
is it everywhere has it and it is um anise like that oh, flavor. Anise. yeah and yeah like licorice black yeah, licorice yeah. and it tasted just like those cookies and so it's like a sambuca yeah but it's called like if emily finds it, it i'll remember what it's called but, aguardiente yes aguardiente and it was bomb <laughs> dude like, oh you I, liked it oh i love oh, it oh cool all right i had so much of that that was really good um favorite food uh tough call but everything was so so dots had a million wrecks our mm. buddy had a million wrecks in Cartagena. and uh Cartagena. is that yeah like the the inflection point is, yeah it sounds like someone in your life down there was saying it like that every everyone time. oh yeah okay uh, Cartagena. It's like that's it's how they a, were saying it. It's yeah. like a, there's a mystery in yeah because there is Cartagena. There is yeah. They probably inside the inside like the old town inside the no, city. No, definitely wall. not. This is like one of those things that one guy said it kind of <laughs> funny, and now Chris has just poisoned his brain. Um, <laughs> they uh, so Dots sent us to some pretty great places, and uh, I'm not going to do it again. But in the beach town, they <laughs> had a ton of seafood, as you can imagine. And which one was the beach town? I can't between remember. the two of them. Medellin, I think. <laughs> no, it was the other one. That no, was Cartagena. Yeah. Uh, they had a ton of seafood, and there was one place that had these crab, uh, like their local crab. Yeah. Uh, in this like garlicky butter, thing. it was just like oh. fucking bomb. And then <laughs> I in, love crab. In, that me too. Good, huh? And in Medellin, there was uh, AJ sent me to a steakhouse called Don Diablo. And larger point of Colombia, it is crazy cheap there. Like mm. wildly, wildly, wildly yeah, cheap. Yeah, it's like that. Maybe not. Have you seen that movie Euro Trip? No. There's a really funny scene in the movie Euro Trip where they end up in Bratislava and the exchange like the joke of the scene is the exchange rate is like at one point a guy flicks a nickel to a concierge at the hotel and he's like I open my own hotel. Because mm-hmm. like the exchange rate's so crazy. But so I hear I've heard Uber it's rides like, were a dollar, dinners were 50 bucks like the most lavish dinners ever 50 bucks each and i went but it is weird because on the menu it's um in so it'll it'll be like a hundred thousand cop which is like the colombian peso a hundred thousand cop is like 10 bucks or something so on the menu stuff's like three hundred and forty five thousand dollars and i'm like yo and they're like it's 30 bucks i'm like oh okay. chris sits down and is like i have to leave yeah yeah <laughs> so we got to don diablo and um, you know, ordered a million like drinks coming like the crazy shit. Like I ordered a drink, a cocktail, and it came out in like a porcelain Buddha thing that I had to like open Fuck a yeah. door and drink out of. And I was like, yeah. You had to like but, open his belly? Yeah. But they had a ribeye, a 45 day dry aged ribeye hmm. that was, and picture like a filet, a filet that you get that's like eight ounces usually. Like that's what a restaurant is. Maybe 12 a 36 ounce 45 day dry aged ribeye it's like a tomahawk massive yeah dude. yeah and it was i think like 40 bucks did you something. get one for yourself or did you guys all share one for me and i wow. ate the whole fucking thing. good job and it was awesome so Do either that's what gave you the the sickness the last few days i did get the itis there though everybody does yeah. my uh, brother and his girlfriend went oh. and got it. Yeah. This this might be the culprit. So it's either between that ribeye, the crab, or um, this might be the culprit because this was fucking reckless, but I wanted to do it. We did a boat day, like a beach club boat day, and we were cruising around. And when we docked at the sandbar, anchored, um, <laughs> Colombian dudes on kayaks just paddled up to the boat and had just and dove down and pulled oysters up from the bottom of the ocean and were shucking them right off the boat oh my god i'm so jealous and i ate those that's probably it though eh? but those were delicious like that was probably the best oyster i've ever had yeah he literally pulled it up cracked it open had hot sauce in his kayak yeah, yeah of course shut up bang guys do that on like fisher island and stuff it's the move fuck you dude uh- <laughs> <laughs> you ever had grilled oysters though yeah my dad our dad loves grilled oysters i love to grill oysters you like them more well i've 100 more than than raw and my friend has wrinkly. a my friend has a place in um cape cod and she has like a little bay in her backyard and it's illegal but we do it anyway allegedly allegedly yeah um and we just go get oysters we shuck them ourselves and i'll we'll, we make this like delicious like buttery cheesy garlicky yeah. sauce and we and we uh, grill them and it's with breadcrumbs and oh like like i get the I get they're all oysters, but like, does that not sound amazing? It sounds that's amazing. literally what I've done on the Cape. It's like the, illegal, yeah. but like we just go out there and how can you not? And like, I'm gonna just literally grab, yeah. grab a bunch of these. We just have our, we put on these little mucky little boots because they do they, they have like the oyster lines out yeah. there, right? 
Or are you guys just like no, diving no, right just, in the, Well, yeah. it's just a little, when the tide is low enough, you just you go out there in these little boots. Yeah. And we have a little bucket. And we so just walk. Sick. Yeah, it's pouring. It's raining. It's pouring pouring rain. rain. But yeah, we have a little bucket and we just go out. There's no, you don't need a line because it's just, when the tide is low enough, you can see the ground on pretty much the whole bay. Yeah, that's and so awesome. There's so that many. Damn, dude. Well, sounds like a decent little trip you Great had trip, there. great experience. Put it on your list if anyone gets the chance. Um, very unique, special place. For the listeners, real quick, deepest apologies. If you can hear the rain right now, that it's unexpected here. We never don't happens. plan for never rain. Never happens. Don't plan for rain, but... Um, Everyone says it never happens, but since I've moved here... It only Yeah, but you've been here it for only one happens. year. Like, not even. Not even. And it's rained so much. I've been here for nine years. I've never seen anything remotely like this. Really? Yeah. Like, not remotely like this. This is absurd. When's it going to stop? Hopefully now. Hopefully in, like, 20 minutes. <laughs> We're good. Um, but let's get into some hockey, to- uh, hockey talk on this hockey podcast. We got a little bit of hot ice uh, before we pop into this Tyler Toffoli interview. Um, CP, take us away. What's going on? Uh, first thing I wanted to hit is the Eastern Conference wild card playoff race is wild. Yeah, we uh, talked about that two episodes ago. I know, and you and, and I both... And know what I'm saying, and it's only wilder. And you and I both deaded the Islanders and the Panthers. Like, I was like, get yep. out of this conversation. I don't yep. want to talk to you. We're both like, you're like Penguin Sabres. I'm like Penguin Senators. And the Penguins have lost four fucking games in a row. They are out. The Islanders are... Com- not com- No one's comfortable, but the Islanders are in. The Panthers are in, which I thought was the longest of long shots. The Senators are dead. The Sabres are dead. The Wings are dead. And yeah. the Caps, dude, the Caps are in it. Someone commented, we posted a clip that was like, um, maybe it was you saying like Penguins, Sen- uh, Sabres. Hmm. And someone posted like, would love that, but it's like Penguins and Caps. And I replied to them and I was like, Caps? Yeah, like that, you were out and of I, I, don't, I still don't think they're going to make it, but like they are very in play. Yeah, they're sniffing. They're sniffing and for so sure. So I am... Uh, we are eating crow, and I'm not even mad about it because it's been super exciting, but I'm just shocked. Yeah, I don't think anyone saw this huge, massive, like, t- almost like a full flip swing coming. So it remains hot. It's going to stay hot, too. Yes. Like, we've got 10 games left, 10 to 12 games left. If anyone thinks that it's just going to stay wire to no, wire what no. it is, you're nuts. It's only going to get more complicated and more insane. So wild, wild shit going on. So been a blast. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Um, we got a big man running the Boston Marathon. How big? Pretty fun. Biggest guy in NHL history, I think. What is he, 6'9"? Yeah. Nice. Z. Probably on skates is like 7'1". Yeah. Uh, but Char's running the Boston Marathon. Um, you said you bet he wins, <laughs> which I think is like the funniest thing of all time because I can't sit here and say that that won't happen. Just he's an absolute it... <laughs> machine. Yeah. Think about that stride, dude. He's going to get up Heartbreak Hill and like... Four leaps and bounds, and he'll be done. Because, <laughs> like, we know from from a just being hockey fans and reading, and b from Charlie coming on that he is just a savage in the training room. So I'm sure his marathon training must have been rocky and Russia level. You know, <laughs> uh, it's either that or he's just being like, oh, I just want to stay active. Yeah, he's and he's going to do barely anything different and yeah. just be able to run the Boston Fair. Marathon. But just I couldn't get over the visual of him next to two Kenyans coming down the home stretch of yeah. Chara, about, about to run a two hour marathon and i'm like what are you doing uh question for you dan In, with the hills included yeah let's say frozone from incredibles was here <laughs> and paved an ice path yeah on the marathon route and Chara could skate it does he win easily are you insane does he lose easily he he wins by a country mile. You think so? If if I could skate it, I would win. If I was on skates and started the same time as these guys, I would win the Boston Marathon. You. That's interesting. I feel I I my head the uphills would be just they would be unbearable because I'd be like how do you get up this? They would be ass. But the hills, I've run the Boston Marathon before. Yeah. The hills aren't, uh, we're not talking like. <laughs> it's not vertical. It's, it's not like a <laughs> fucking roller coaster. It's just like a slight incline. And like, yeah, that would suck. But like in my darkest of nightmares, if I came to a stop, I would just, you know, like chop, chop my way up. But then on the downhills. You're crooking. I am ass. fucking going 50 miles per hour. So. Okay. So Chara, And I can glide. Chara wins easily. Easily. 
I'm going to get this question to him one way or another, and I just want to see what he thinks. Like, Chara, after he runs, I'm going to go, if you had been able to skate it, would you have won easily? He would laugh at you. Unless I, he wins I, I, easily anyway. I'm telling I'll you play. right now, I would win easily. I'm going to do some deep digging on this. All right. You can do, all, do the digging you want to. I'll give but, you the shovel. But Good luck, got, Z. Yeah. Good luck, Z, in the marathon. Um, speaking of playoffs, a little bit of a uh, division leader flip-flop potential coming up here. Boston's not going anywhere, but you pointed out it is very close everywhere. It's like cur- currently, what do we got? Carolina, we've got Dallas, and we've got Vegas. Vegas, and they've got people sniffing their heels every every which way. And like you just said, with the wild card being anyone that thinks this isn't changing is an idiot. I did feel like the four division winner. Go back a month, mm-hmm. the four division leaders. I was like, if you think this is changing, you're an idiot. There's a lot of parity below this, but like Boston, Carolina. Vegas and Dallas have won their divisions. Carolina, I think it's only a point. Devil's only a point back right now, but Carolina does have a few games in hand now. Mm. And and a week or two ago, they they didn't. So I was like, actually, like the Devils might catch them. I do think Carolina will still hold on. But no joke, dude. I'm I'm I'll call it right here. I'll put this on record. I think the Kings win the Pacific, and I think Colorado wins. What's it? The West? What the hell's it called? The Central. Central. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And I, I'm like shocked by that. If you, if you go back a month or so, like I never had that in sight at all. Yeah, I mean the Central's insane. The Central's uh, Dallas is currently in first with 89 points in 70 games played. Colorado with 69 games played has one point less with 88, and Minnesota with same amount as Dallas, 70 games played has 88 as well. Yeah, like they are. That is going to come down to the wire. Mm-hmm presumably and then look at la dude. um and then yeah vegas in 70 games 92 points kings in 71 games 92 points edmonton in 71 88 points i just want to real quick some stick taps to edmonton oh, because dude. they have turned it on in a big way early season i gave them so much shit for being a they're 500 floundering team, yeah. fucking 500 wild card team and now in the dark of night they're 40 23 and 8 they just win and it's I'm I'm impressed. Me I'm too. Very impressed with them. They're they are hot at the right time. But uh, it's it's funny seeing Seattle now as a uh, uh, wild card team. Yeah, like Seattle was way up there, which for a they long would time. have taken, right? Like you'd be like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, my god, of course. The, yep. I was like, I promise you a wild card at the beginning of the season. They're like, fuck yeah. But it does suck that they were like comfortably in second. Yeah. But it's it that it it's it's interesting to say that the the playoff down the stretch race, if you will isn't there isn't just action in who's going to get in it's there's so much flip-flop standing act like there we could not ask for a better last three weeks of the season of like Dude, so much shit is about to happen with the, and change it's with crazy. the format that we fucking all hate it matters so much now because if you're if you're in a race for one or two in your division or in your conference let's say you go yeah i guess this matters but really it's am i playing the eight seed or the seven seed yeah who fucking cares but this is like, if you're the one, you catch the wild card team. And if you're the two, you catch the Oilers. You know, like, you, you play yeah. the third place team in your division. I'm like, that sucks. Honestly, the best example is the Met. Like, yeah, yeah. Carolina Rangers and, and uh, Devils is, is such a funny... Either play... They're, the they are either, the Islanders. Yeah, they're either playing a wild card team or one of each other. And, like, that is a fucking diabolical situation. Fucked. So, enjoy that. Um, all right, let's get into hottest teams. Breeze through that so we can get into this Tyler Toffoli interview. Take us away, Chris. Uh, okay, very rare two qu- rounds of quacks, because I just need <sighs> these to be mentioned. Make this as quick as possible. You're getting way too generous with quacks. These teams are hot, and they deserve quacks. I, I, don't, I don't know if they do. Uh, quacks... To the Florida Panthers because they've won three in a row and they are now in the playoffs. That deserves a quack. Quack, 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 quack. Quacks the New York Rangers who have won four in a row and could have been made this could have made this list, but they were all they were against the Caps, the Pens, the Pens, and the Preds, all non playoff teams, so it was hard to make them jump anybody. That's true. Quack, 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 quack. Okay, the number three hottest team this week. You just mentioned them, Dan, the Edmonton Oilers. They had a four and week with wins against Ottawa, Dallas, Seattle, and San Jose. That in Seattle game was a pretty important one to keep their standing. The Oilers have leapfrogged them, dude. They're third, like you said. I think the Kings jump them, but or I think the Kings jump Vegas, like I said, and I think that Vegas Edmonton yeah. is a super juicy first round matchup. McDavid versus Eichel, one overall versus two overall. 
That'll be fun. That will be fun. Uh, the number two hottest team of the week are the Desert Dogs, my boys down in Arizona. I hate to say it for them, but they've got four wins this week. They beat the Wild in OT, Flames in OT, beat the Canucks, and then one of the great idiot moves of all time, they beat the Blackhawks. <laughs> so uh, they're hot, but like we said, same with the Blackhawks who are winning a bunch of games. Stop winning, you fucking morons. You need Connor Bedard so badly. Stop winning. It's remarkable. It's too late in the year for a four-game win streak. But for them, they're the second hottest team of the week. First hottest team of the week. Do you have one? Or yeah, do you have any? No, I uh, I have a game to watch, but oh, okay, good, good. No, good, but it's good. irrelevant because it's coming. Uh, the game to watch is tonight, and this comes out after. Well, why don't you why don't you just look up some games? Yeah. Coming oh, up? I will. Um, okay. I just I was a little. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The number one hottest team of the week. Uh oh, dude! It's the bad, the, the, bad, the bad man coming. The bad man. It's coming. actually like I, I feel bad for the West. Yeah, me too. It's the Colorado Avalanche, winners of six straight, and they've been a little, they've been a little streaky in both directions. Mm-hmm. So I, I've, I've sung this song before, but they've won six straight. They beat the Habs eight two. They beat the Leafs two one in a shootout. They beat the Senators five four. They beat the Wings five one, and they beat the Hawks five nothing. Dan, real quick, those first two games they scored eight and two. What does that add up to? 10? What is 10 divided by 2? 5. They've been scoring 5 goals a game Whew. during this fucking streak. And it is rattling to me that the Avs are back there scoring their point, point behind Dallas with a game in hand. They're going to win that division. Book it. Hottest team of the week. Yeah, it's not great for the league. Look out. Uh, all right. Well, that's our hottest teams of the week. Now, let's get into this interview with Tyler Toffoli. Like I said, CP wasn't with us, very unfortunately. But still had an absolute blast. Hope you guys do too. Let's hit it. All right, well, we're super thrilled to be joined right now by 47th overall pick in the 2010 draft by the L.A. Kings. Absolute stud for the Calgary Flames right now. Eddie Powers Memorial Trophy winner, having a career year. Tyler Toffoli, welcome to the Empty Nighters podcast. Thank you. Unbelievable. Feels like a long time ago now. (laughs) Yeah, I bet, right? (laughs) Um, Well, dude, in the intro, I was going to touch on you were the first Stanley Cup winner we've ever had. So, with the playoffs looming, I want to dive right into that part of your career playoffs coming around the corner here you guys are battling for a spot right now can you tell me a little bit about that cup run so early in your career and what that playoff run was like like how did that feel so young in your time in the nhl to be like okay here we go we got a chance here and then you go the distance yeah it was definitely really weird because the start of the year i started in the minors too so yeah um i remember being in the minors and i was obviously doing really well and the whole time i'm calling my agent being like hey you know, why am I not playing in the NHL, blah, blah, blah. Like, I deserve to be in the NHL. Yep. And it was just this whole process. I think I played 15, around 15 games or so. And then I finally got my chance, and it obviously started working out and um, just making the playoffs and playing my, you know, first the first round in general was uh, was pretty crazy. And obviously, you know how that went, going down 3 nothing to uh, San Jose. And, yeah. Um, at that point, I was like, oh, you know, summer's coming soon, you know, we're not going to be going any further. And all of a sudden we won game four, game five, game six and game seven. And then it's almost like the rest of it was almost like a blur. And, um, yeah, it was nuts. When you get over a hump like that, cause it's like, that's such a good point. When you're down three Oh, you're kind of like, well, this is, we're toast here. But then when you come back, win four straight, do you feel like there's so much momentum going into that next round where you're like, we can't be stopped right now. It's like, that's got to roll over. Yeah, it was such a quick turnaround, too. I think um, we ended up playing Anaheim the next round, too. And it definitely helped us. But at the same time, it was like, it was almost like, thank God we're playing Anaheim because we just finished, you know, a series. And it was almost like we had one day off. Yeah. Not even to practice. And then we were playing again. And um, obviously, that one went seven seven games, too. But, yeah. Um, it was definitely crazy and, and so many emotions. And I really didn't know what to expect. Cause I'm just like, you know, trying to stay in the lineup, you know, essentially. And, um, we had so many good leaders and so many good players on our team that it, uh, you know, it worked out. Yeah, it sure did. Um, what, what you just said, like you said, you started in the minors that season, then you get up, you're in this epic playoff run, go to the cup. Were you still kind of feeling the pressure or were you so shell shocked of like, holy shit, I'm in the NHL. I'm playing well. We're one of a handful of teams that's ever come back from down 03. There was just so much cool shit going on and so much mojo. It feels like you might've even been distracted of like, no, this is great. Let's just keep the good times rolling. Or were you constantly in the back of your head? Like, 
keep playing well, keep playing well. This is a stressful situation. Yeah, I think you know, for me personally, the uh, the first round San Jose, I played I played well. I think I had three three goals, four goals in the series, and um, Anaheim was kind of uh, it was a totally different series. It was more of a grind, and um, it was almost like there was no puck out on the ice. Where you're just trying to you know survive basically with um, guys running around and uh, everything after the whistles and. Um, we ended up winning there and then playing in Chicago and playing Chicago in the playoffs is the craziest atmosphere I've ever been, been a part of. And, yeah. um, when you're lining, lining up against Patrick Kane and, uh, Taves and, uh, Sharp, I mean, half those guys are <laughs> hall of famers, Dude, right? So, that old team. um, you know, just winning that series alone, uh, in overtime game seven at United center was was so so crazy and um i remember leading up and and doing all the the interviews or whatever before the finals it was um it was surreal and you know kind of get goosebumps sort of thinking about it i bet dude not to mention you get to the cup and then you have the assist on martinez's <laughs> double ot cup winning goal do you have that puck or does alec have it i th i want to say the hall of fame's got to have that one that's actually probably true because yeah. I, I think i remember after the game the f one of like the first things that happened was like um they took marty's gloves and his stick and all this stuff and marty's looking around he's like first of all he for sure had no clue where he was or what was going on and um and neither did i or yeah. anybody but um he for sure had no clue what was going on and um i'm assuming that that puck got got taken yeah that's probably archives somewhere for <laughs> sure do you uh what did you do with the cup what was your day like uh first it was it was just uh, the first half of the day was whatever my my parents wanted to do. We uh, had the uh, the cup at at my house, and it was almost like a, uh, I was just taking photos with all my dad's friends and uh, yeah. family members. And then obviously the second half of the day was more of a blur, and that's when the the drinking started. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know it goes from there. <laughs> do you remember what ice cream you ate out of it? Because I did see that. It was uh, assorted. It was a lot of different flavors for sure. Yeah. That's the smart thing to do. And you took it golfing too, right? Uh, I did not take it golfing, but the Kings had a uh, the charity event the next year. Sure, that's right. And um, it followed me around a lot, maybe because I was having a lot of fun and uh, yeah. they're getting some good photos. <laughs> there you go, dude. I love it. Um, all right. So like you said, you're in the HL. You're, you're from Scarsborough. Scarborough, rather. And you're on the East Coast, then you go to Manchester, then you get the call up, and then you're winning a fucking Stanley Cup. It's like such a whirlwind. But now you're in L.A. You're playing incredibly with this team. I want to know the whole L.A. journey, starting with Cat. How did you meet Cat? When did that happen? What part in your career did it all kind of come together? Because, you know, you've bounced around a little bit, which has been shocking, which we'll get to. But you do feel very much like an L.A. guy still. Like, it feels like that's such a huge rooted part of your life. Yeah, when uh, ever since I got drafted, it was kind of one of those things where uh, the GM at the time, Dean Lombardi, was sort of like um, basically saying the 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 more time you spend in LA, the better chance you're going to have of making the team, and yeah, um, that in, in obviously included the summers. And um, if you look at all the, the 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 entire roster, it was like Dustin Brown, um, Justin Williams, uh, Trevor Lewis, all these guys playing right wing, and I'm like. How how am I going to fit into yeah. this to this roster that um, is obviously a really good team? They won the Stanley Cup, you know, the year prior, two years prior, whatever it yeah. was, and um, so I basically I did everything I could, and um, I started spending my summers with Tanner Pearson, actually, who got drafted uh, the year after me, I think it was, and uh, from then on, it was just a lot of fun, and we won the cup, and I think it was the summer after whatever it was that i met no, you, you guys, well you guys brought the cup to dodger stadium <clears throat> the whole team yes. and that was in the <clears throat> summer after and then uh for king's night at dodgers tanner tyler martin jones and alec came to like do like king's night and i was the one that was kind of like hosting them around they really wanted to meet magic johnson um <laughs> it was like a funny day with all of them and then tyler slid into my dms after Nice. And said, if you Dude. ever need someone to throw out a first pitch, I'm available. And yeah. it, Ty, and that it is worked. a really good line. That's what I thought. That no, is a really, I mean, she clearly thinks, she it thinks every, She thinks it, it's funny for everybody else, but, you know, she fell for it. I was, my <laughs> next question was going to be, what was the line? But clearly it made an impression. Yeah. That's a good line. Yeah. I mean, come on. I don't know if she responded back pitch. for like a year. Or... No, it took me nine months to respond. <laughs> <laughs> so she didn't like it that much, but then... I mean, hey, eventually it came around. It worked. Whatever. Wait, have you done a first pitch? 
I've, she made me do, I think, five. Uh, he became like the team mascot after that. <laughs> so every every year during King's Night, he was the first pitch, and Justin always caught it, and you you had a, have a really good throw. And he okay. hit a, he hit a home run as well at batting practice one year. So with a wood bat, with it might have been Turner's. It might have been. I JT's think it was bat, a bat. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, he was the only guy that actually hit a home run. Dude, that's super impressive. It was, it was actually funny, too. Have you played baseball, or was that just I played sheer? baseball. Okay, no, I played okay. baseball growing up. I was like, that is a wildly impressive thing to just pick up a bat and crank yeah, a home we, run. We were hitting. Yeah. So the, the day I hit the home run, it was it was funny because I had hit. I was like the first one to go, and I think there was like five other guys with me at the time. And mm-hmm. um, I was like, not getting, I was like maybe hitting, you know, kind of deep balls, but like nothing crazy. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, all the Dodger guys started coming out and uh, take their warm up or yeah. whatever they started doing, and they started chirping me, and I was like, "Oh shit, here we go." Yeah. And JT told the the guy throwing the BP, he was like, "Throw throw it harder, like you know, throw it faster for me." And the first one, I like, I think I completely missed, and I was like, "Oh fuck, That's so, <laughs> so embarrassing." Yeah, like they, all the guys on the team were <clears throat> out here. Yeah, and then the second one, I, I cracked, and I I think it might have hit the wall, or it was like you know. It was, it, was, it was out there. Yeah. And then the third one, I hit it and I heard like maybe I felt like the entire stadium. It was probably like four of the Dodger guys. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, I heard JT goes, Oh, fuck, it's gone. Because <laughs> the inter- well, they can hear, right? Just from yeah. the crack. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say the noise, they know for sure. The entire it, team was warming up in left field when it happened over their heads, which was kind of like Tyler's moment <laughs> and i and i have not picked up a bat since uh, nor should you i was gonna you had a lot of very incredible moments in your nhl career that might be no it's up moment. there it's that's up there. gotta be it's up there. do you have that bat uh, i think i i think i do have the bat i think you might but also the kings were rolling so they like posted it oh my god dude that is an epic <laughs> i definitely have the ball i because i remember um you have the ball i yes. remember getting the ball yeah you all might right have the bat. so cats your kind of entry into this dodgers world and like, were you? Did you feel like you were a big fan? Because you're a big fan now. It feels like. Well, I'm, I mean, I, I'm a Dodger fan, obviously, from being here and going to games. But I'm definitely a Justin Turner fan. Um, I think he's he's a hockey fan too. So he watches yeah. me all the time. We kind of text all the time and sure and shoot the shit about that. But um, I don't want to say I'm a Red Sox fan now. But um, it's I'm okay. Definitely, I'm, I'm a Red Sox fan. It's yeah. okay. So it's easy. It's easy. So, so I was telling Cat <laughs> earlier, and I like and I like Kike too. So. Yeah. So so uh, you know I I moved out here ten or uh, almost ten years ago, lifelong Red Sox fan. But it's like when you're somewhere and you're going to games all the time, you become a fan. Yeah. And truly, not just saying it. JT was like immediate favorite player. Oh yeah. So to find out that you guys are boys and like now he's on the Red Sox, it's like now all three of us are boys <laughs> and it's just a perfect combination. Exactly. But we was like kind of doing some of that first pitch stuff. Is that how you and JT became friends or was it just a natural you're hanging out at the park, he's just a cool dude, you guys kind of connected and became friends. So Cat's best friends with his wife. So that's how it worked. And then it yeah. ended up, you know, being, you know, getting connected and then obviously I'd be throwing the first pitch and then I'd be weaseling my way into the locker room and having a drink with him after a game, yeah. after a win, obviously. And, yeah, yeah. Um, and then just, you know, they're, they're, they're so good, right? And then they, the Kings would have Dodgers night. So JT would come out. I think Kike came out. Um, drop the puck. Dro- and drop the puck, the, yeah. whatever. So um, him, uh, got to know Jock a little bit too. Uh, just a couple guys that you kind of shoot, you know, shoot the sure. shit with. And then... Oh, like I said, all of a sudden I'm in the locker room. I'm like having a beer, or a little tequila or something, and I'm like, "This is kind of cool." Yeah, <laughs> Dude, just like an honorary doctor. <laughs> I'm like, player. I'm like, nice. Yeah. So it's it's it was. You've, you've hit a home run. It's like, yeah, yeah come on. I, I fit in. You've earned your place yeah. there for sure. I mean, that's a no brainer. We, I was actually saying it's been funny. Kike, we were at the Winter Classic and seeing Kike doing all that oh, yeah. stuff. Seeing this like crazy little Puerto Rican guy being like, "I love hockey." It's, it's like fun. such a blast. He's, he's a awesome. He's he's he, honestly he's so funny. I think. Um, we did that uh, in the summer. We did the um, ping pong. The ping pong, and what was the like the the concert that they did too? Uh, like the gala. The gala. Yeah. And it was it was just a good time. Everyone yeah. was everyone was having fun, and yeah. he just like his energy is awesome. Just being I mean, around him. They seem like such fun ass guys, and like you seem like a fun dude, so it just made sense yeah. that you guys all connected. Friendsgivings are fun. Oh wow. <laughs> That must be a blast. <laughs> yeah. That's like a perfect combination. Exactly. Wow. Uh, so you're in LA, right? You get drafted. You win a cup immediately. You meet Cat. You're a member of the Dodgers team. I mean, like this is unbelievable. You're doing all this stuff. Then you guys play in the outdoor game. You tuck a hat trick. No big deal. First player ever in an outdoor game to score a hat trick. Two days later, you get traded. 
I heard you were out to dinner with the boys when you found out. I was. What was that like? It was honestly, it was, uh, it was, you know, it's unfortunate. It was almost like a full year coming. I almost got traded the year before or yeah. whatever. And I kind of knew I was going to get traded at some point. And, um, we, we went to drinks b before the mm -hmm. game and we had our morning skate or whatever it was. Um, or sorry, we practiced, it was the practice day. And I was uh, going to say, go and to drinks before no the no, no yeah it's before the practice savage pregame before the practice game <laughs> and someone some uh someone in the king's organization texted me or or i saw him at the game and he was like on a, he was like just have fun tonight and i was like huh that's kind of weird you know you saying that yeah like why would you say that like why would you say that to me it almost felt like something was coming and obviously we went out playing against a really good really good colorado team and yeah. i was like I was like, oh shit, like, please just like, don't be minus four tonight and this be your last game, whatever, you know, and went out first shift. I think McKin McKinnon was absolutely flying. He had like four chances to score quick. He stood on his head, stood on his head the entire game. Mm -hmm. And I ended up scoring a hat trick and um, obviously it was a great time. And then the next day, I think we flew to Winnipeg and I'm out for dinner. We're all sitting at the bar. Um, What's the, I can't remember. High is, is, the, is the steakhouse in Winnipeg. Uh -huh. And there's like 10 of us. And I'm sitting beside Alec Martinez. And my phone was just like, you know, up, whatever. Sure. We're sitting there. And I see Rob Blake. And I look at Marty. And I'm like, oh. well, I'm fucking gone. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, and Marty uh, obviously was, he got traded yeah, yeah. a day. week. Oh, yeah, day. whatever it was. I was going to say, I was the same and so he, I did. So it was, he looked at me and goes, oh, shit, you beat me, Ty. <laughs> and so obviously that so like. So he felt like he knew too? Well, it was just like we, yeah, we both knew that we were getting traded. It was yeah. like it was everywhere, right? So, sure. um, but it was just like so bizarre. And then I took the phone call, and obviously it was super emotional. I came back in, uh, my food just just sat down, and whatever I said bye, I was like, "Who's there? Marty, Carts, Quickie, Brownie, Louie, do it was everybody. Yeah, yeah. it was like was honestly say, ten thing. guys. And I said bye to everybody, and I I went to pay the bill and brown i think it was like brownie goes don't worry ty i got this one <laughs> i was like oh i'm like was, thanks brownie i was going to ask uh, you, you, haven't, the boys... you haven't you haven't paid for a meal in my seven <laughs> this is my sixth seventh year here this yeah. is the first time you're gonna buy buy me a meal that i'm not even gonna touch yeah perfect farewell from yeah. brownie right <laughs> and then uh and then i went on a flight and went to vancouver that that night yeah so I mean, what's that? I, we, we you know we've talked to some guys who have who have been dealt and and go through that process and and like you said, it was everywhere. It's I'm sure you're hearing all this nonsense, but what's that feeling like in the middle of the season, going to a new team, kind of having to adjust to the new playing style, the new rituals of the team, all the new guys and all that stuff. And it sounds like uh, Tanner was there, right? Yeah. And how helpful was that? It was honestly, it was it was such an easy transition and. Um... I'm like, I'm an easygoing guy. I don't really have any like superstitions or I don't care where I sit on the bus, on the plane, like any of that stuff. You just sit me down somewhere. Oh, I'm fine. Yeah. Right. So like that whole part of it was easy. Um, but the first couple of days I remember following Tanner around like a puppy. Yeah. Like he was like, <laughs> like, I, I don't know where anything is. I don't know anybody's names. I don't, I knew, I knew a bunch of the guys. Chris Tanner was there too. He's from just outside of Scarborough. Yeah. So like I, I know him or not like growing up, but like kind of knew him yeah, a little of course. bit. You guys are familiar. Um, but like that year was, they had such a good group of guys. Uh, half of them are in Calgary now, but um, it was just so easy for me. So it was going to Vancouver was probably best case scenario. I, I want to say, I don't know this for sure. I want to say Blake, he knew that I would, I would enjoy it there. And um, that's kind of a reason why I went there, but, or he traded me there, but um it was great. It was it was easy. Um, became friends with a lot of guys that I still talk to today. And like I said, we have Marky, Tanny, and Stetcher now in Calgary that I hope that was in Vancouver with. Which me, is so. huge. Yeah, that must have been cool. So Tanner came after you were already in Calgary. He so Tanner got traded the year before me to Pittsburgh, and then that same year I think he went to Vancouver at the deadline. It was it was weird, but. Um, so I think he was already there for like a full season, basically by the time I got there. Okay, cool. Um, but I mean, that's, that's great to hear. You know, I can't imagine how much that helps that transition to like have a buddy, someone you've played yeah. with and one that that happened again, it's kind of cool to hear that that's happened to you a few times. And then you get Delta Calgary and Luch is there. Yeah. And you being a lifelong Bruins fan, 
I need to know everything about Luch. Like it's, it's too long for what this podcast is, is uh, able. Oh, able to give talk me some about. of the quick hitters then. Like he seems uh, to to be such a domineering presence on the ice. A guy who, frankly, you know, still being so effective in the league. I I think there's a lot of people who wouldn't have expected that from him, given how his game is. Yeah. And then every by every account, he's the nicest guy in the world for sure. So, uh, what's your relationship like with him, and how nice was it getting to Calgary and having him there? Yeah. Well, I remember when he got traded to L.A. Um, we he met up with like the management and stuff, and um, they wanted me and Tanner to go for dinner with him. So we went for dinner with him. Uh, we had a lot of fun. <laughs> I was about to say, I bet that was a very cool yeah, dinner. Yeah, and I, obviously at the time, I'm like, I, I think I had only played against him once or twice. Uh-huh. And I was like, I just remember like going into the game, everyone was like, whatever you do, just don't wake him up. And I'm like, how am I going to wake him up? <laughs> like like me waking the guy up, and obviously they were talking about like other guys. And I'm like, what does that mean? Like That, that sounds like kind of scary. Yeah, and it's then, ominous. And then I see him in warm up, no, no helmet. I'm like, holy shit, that guy's big. And then the game starts. He's no visor. He's like one of five or six right. guys in the league that doesn't wear a visor. I'm like, oh, my God, this guy is massive. <laughs> and he's just skating around. He's like hitting guys, um, missing guys, and just hitting the glass. The whole, like the entire like side is shaking because he's he, he, he The hits whole it. arena shakes oh, when yeah. he does that. Um, and then we became really good friends. I think we, we ended up hanging out every single day on the road and – um, going for dinners all the time and just having a lot of fun. And then, like you said, going to Calgary, he was, he picked me up, um, cooked me dinner at 11 o'clock at night, whatever it was. And your first day there. Yeah. From what? the airport. From the airport. What yeah, him and his wife picked me up and, uh, um, Oh my God. Like I said, cooked me. I think it was like, it was like Calgary, Alberta beef steak. It was like, it Probably was like ma- Wagyu. It was massive. Like right off the farm. Right? <laughs> it was massive. And he's like, he's like, eat, eat. We got a, we got a game tomorrow. I'm like, how do you want me to eat this 14 ounce ribeye <laughs> at 11:30 at night? Like I'm, I'm trying. I'm eating. I'm like, obviously, like I still got like the nerves of like going to a new team, yep. and, like all that stuff. And I'm just, we're we're talking, and all of a, I wake up and I'm Calgary Flame and going to the Saddle Dome. Come on, I mean, uh, I I feel like he is one of those fun guys that that sort of flies under the radar as far as the media, and recently i think this season posted a nice fun picture with you guys at an amusement park was that disney that was disney that was, was years that ago that though. was like four it was an old photo ago. um we were on uh what's cars land I, it looked like the cars yeah. ride yeah and it was great yeah i literally Ty, did... you look a little scared for being honest <laughs> oh, in the photo oh, he's I, screaming you know so what? that's why it's, i took that it's photo like the butterflies was, <laughs> ty, ty has a really funny cute like high-pitched scream like <laughs> sometime when he's scared and the two of them were like screaming with their hands up. So I took that photo and like, I don't know, every year I feel like when it's the anniversary of that photo, we all like send it to each other. I'd say it's an incredible photo. I do the same thing. The- we definitely had more fun than his kids did that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a day, yeah. it's a day for you yeah, guys, exactly, not so much the kids. Exactly. There's a, I think it's the Guardians ride now, but it used to be Tower of oh, Terror. Oh, yeah. I that gets me every time. legitimately squeal. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's me. involuntary. Like your hands go up and you just start giggling. And it's like, like, like you know what's happy. coming too. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm fully aware of what's about to happen, but it just it comes out every time. Oh, yeah, every single time. I love that photo of you guys. Um, so getting sent to new teams and meeting new players, uh, when you got traded to, or when you signed with Montreal, rather, you... Just want to give some stick taps to you. The Players Tribune article you had about that experience was incredible. And it was so cool hearing about all this stuff. And you go over to this market. I'd let I'd love to just hear quickly about like the decision to go to Montreal, how it felt being there, because getting to chat with Kat a little bit sounds like you guys loved Montreal. Mm-hmm. And I wanna know, I I feel like so many fans, so many players hear all about how crazy the Montreal market is. The fans, the media, and all that. What was the experience like for you guys? What were some of the things that brought you there that made you feel like this is a good fit? These are guys because I I feel like it sounds like you you kind of saw the way Suzuki was playing and you were like I could do well with that guy. Yeah, so obviously Susie had a really good um, bubble playoff or whatever we want to call it, and so watching him, I'm like that kid's like 20 years old. He's he's like pretty good. Yeah, and you know going through the free agency period was <clears throat> obviously not ideal for me. Um, literally the worst time to sign as a free agent of all time in regards to money and all yeah. that stuff. So um, teams were kind of limited, but Montreal and a couple other other teams were talking to me. And um, <clears throat> I think obviously Pat Brisson being French and everything 
had a little bit of, you know, he thought I'd do really well there. And, um, I just thought it'd be a really cool experience and, um, going there, it's almost like we fit in right away. I didn't know anybody on the team. I think I, yeah. I knew Brennan Gallagher a very, very little just from like summer hockey tournaments and being the same age and all that stuff. But really other than that, I, I, I didn't, I didn't know anybody. Yeah. So the first couple of you know, days, weeks, whatever you want to call it was, was very weird. And then, um, COVID, you know, was nuts, yeah, especially it's... in, in Montreal it was, you know, shut down. We had curfews, you know, this and that, but, um, we had all these rules and restrictions, um, which was kind of everywhere. But at the same time, Montreal was like next level. Like there's, I honestly can't say that it was, it was any crazier. Yeah. It was any crazier than that. Yeah. Um, but obviously we just, we had a team that, um, I don't, I don't know if we like snuck in the playoffs, but like it was, it was like kind of close and we just went out and we had fun. We had, we had, we had such a good group of guys with Shea Weber, Carey Price, Corey Perry. Um, we had all these guys and then Cole ended up signing and coming playing with us and just like, it was so, it was so fun. We, we had a lot of fun, yeah. you know, on the road because we were on the road for eight days, nine days at a time in, in Vancouver playing five games, whatever it was. It was, it was definitely a bizarre season, but it was, it ended up being a, a lot of fun. Yeah. You've said that Cole is the funniest dude you've ever met in your life. <clears throat> That kid is something else. Okay, I need stories. I need why you feel that way. What's the funniest thing about him? What's the deal? So I didn't, obviously I wasn't at any like development camps or any of that stuff with him. And I don't even know, he might've had one or two maybe. But I swear to God, this kid comes in after signing right out of college. And he is like holding court in the locker room, <laughs> talking to all these guys. And even like, even like Webby is like listening to this kid. I'm like, I'm like, what is this rookie yeah. like doing? And I'm like, I'm like, like laughing because he he's he's laughing, he's giggling, he's having like the time of his life. Yeah, I swear to God, it, like a kid in a candy shop. Yeah, he's like looking around. I'm like, but it was every single day, and no matter what. And Jeez. and I think I said it. Um, I don't know if it was in the Players Tribune or whatever it was, but he every single day before I even finish my coffee, this guy is wide awake having the best time of his life and i <laughs> and from funny. from what i've heard he's he's the exact same yeah still nothing's changed did he go through any rookie party stuff or any any of those initiation moments or was he just always kind of just bouncing around having the time of his life i missed i ended up he missing traded, his rookie right? party yeah. um i think it was like a week or two and they ended up having it in vancouver but i heard some stories i heard it was a good time um but yeah that he is he's something else yeah it sounds like he's just got an energizer bunny pack oh, he, on the back of him at all times every every single day i'm telling you <laughs> oh god all right well the perfect transition into it you get traded again which is mental because it's like the shortened season 44 points 52 games you're playing essentially point per game you're loving montreal new management comes in you move again what was it like we talked about with luch being there but a, a bigger one for me that i was curious about is you you get there and sutz is the coach Talk to me about Sutz, your relationship with him. Was that a factor in like when you got there of being like, okay, this I know how to play for this guy. I know his style. Was that a welcoming element of going to Calgary? Or was it like a, oh shit, here's like one of the funniest coaches in the league. He got the strangest attitude of all time. What was that like? Yeah, I mean, Daryl's my favorite coach I've I've had, you know, throughout my career, and that's not against anybody who's coached me, but um just the way that he like his mentality he's he's the most intelligent coach he everything he does is is for a reason and um you know you have to earn your ice time and i feel like that's what's helped me be successful in the nhl is um you know learning under him and and how to be be a pro basically and um i remember how how hectic of a day it was um when i got the call that i got traded and um I was like answering all these calls and you know, it was like the PR from Calgary and you know, it was, it was tree, the GM calling me and like, and all this stuff was happening. And then all of a sudden I had this, like this funny feeling in my stomach and it, it was a Calgary number coming out. I'm like, I think this one's Daryl. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I answer it <laughs> and I say, hello. And there was like no answer for like, I, it felt like five seconds. And he goes, Ty, I'm happy if you're happy. And I'm like, yeah, I'm happy. And he goes, all right, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> and I was like, oh boy, here we go. Yeah. And then obviously get getting to Calgary it was it was. I mean, it's awesome. He's he's the same, and and he expects the best out of everyone. And um, you know, I think you know it's helped me in, in this time of my career where 
um, I'm in my prime and um, I love coming to the rink and playing for him. Yeah. Was it, did it feel like an easy transition, like coming there, knowing that, knowing him or was there still, I mean, of course there's going to be a transition period of you're with a new team with new guys, but like that. But when you kind of stepped on that first practice working with him again, was it like just like it used to be? Yeah, it was, it's all, it's all relative, right? Like every, every coach has the same drills and every team does it does the same stuff now and um like like you said i've kind of been around a little bit where um i kind of know what to expect and um i think the first little bit was uh was a little weird but the transition ended up being super easy and um obviously we, we came up short but it was it was a lot of fun coming to a really good team i think i got there they had won like four or five straight games and then um we ended up winning like 12 straight and yeah. i was like holy shit that seems really good yeah you know watching you know, guys like johnny and chucky and uh lindy i think they ended up being the best line in the league last year and i'm like we don't even have to do anything like, these, <laughs> these guys are scoring six yeah. goals a night you know? yeah so, seriously um but it was, it was a lot of fun and um you know i wish we could have had a different result but it is what it is yeah i, I mean that, that was an unbelievable run you guys <clears throat> had the battle of alberta which was so fun as a fan to watch what was that i mean you talk about those guys like chucky and and johnny what was it like a guy who's very familiar with the trade world and, and how much pieces can move watching those dudes leave in the summer? Was that crazy or was it, it's part of the game. It's part of the business. You're going to have new players coming in. We got to get back to work. How does it feel? Yeah, I think, I think for me, in my opinion, obviously I was only there for a short season. I didn't, I don't, I don't know. I didn't know Johnny sure. or Chucky. Right. So, um, <clears throat> I think Johnny leaving, you know, that's just a factor of, you know, free agency and that's just the way it is. And, Obviously, you hear the rumors that Calgary offered him more money or whatever it was. And yeah. um, but at the end of the day, it's a family decision. It is what it is. And, um, you know, I see him now and, you know, it seems like he's he's happy being back in the U.S. or and, and, all, and all that. But I think the, the more shocking thing was when Chucky got traded and it was like, I think Kat and I were coming home from dinner or something or wherever we were. And I was like, I think I think we just traded Chucky. <laughs> And I think he's going to Florida. And I think we're we're getting Hubie and Weegs and a first round pick and a prospect. And I'm like, holy shit, this is crazy. Yeah. He pulled over the car. <clears throat> yeah. I would have done the same thing. <laughs> I mean, it's like that's it what's was so crazy. Funny. I nobody expected it. Yeah. I mean, that's what's so funny about these things. I, I, from the outside looking in, as a fan, you you hear about some of these huge moves, and of course, you immediately think about how it affects that player, how it affects the the guys moving back and forth, but it affects you guys too. It's like yeah. there's friendships, there's there's line mates, there's stuff like that, and I would have done the same thing with something like that. I'd have been like, "What the fuck just happened? Yeah. I need Pulled to over process." The car it. and you called him on. Yeah, because <laughs> I don't think he even knew yet. No, he, like we because like... he he was at dinner too, and he and he was like, "What are you talking about?" And I'm like, "I'm telling you, I'm seeing this, and it's it's from." Uh, Elliot Friedman, Pierre LeBron, like all these, the legit guys, like, you know, like if they're tweeting it or whatever, or, or whatever, it's, yeah. it's true. And so he was like, well, who's saying it? I'm like, Pierre, Elliot. And he yeah. goes, fuck, ho holy shit. <laughs> We were a like, block from our house, by the way. Yeah. We pulled over the car. I'll always remember it. We were. Yeah. <laughs> Kat, are you sitting in the passenger seat? Like, just go home. We're well, right there. No, like, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm like invested as well on Twitter, whatever. But. Yeah, it was crazy. I was like, it was definitely a weird time. And, um, obviously it, it ended up working out, you know, Chucky wanted to, you know, move on sure. in his career and, um, we got two really good players and, and everything. So, um, you know, it was definitely just a weird time and part of the summer I was like, but then at the end of the day, I'm like, holy shit, I might, I'm going to play a lot more, you know, like, you know, this is a really good opportunity for me. Yeah. And, um, he just moved on. Yeah. You took it in stride too, dude. I mean, come on, <clears throat> you're playing out of your mind right now. Yeah. It's, it's, you know what, it's been definitely a weird season, but at the end of the day, it's like we were so close to making the playoffs and we're in a, you know, a tough situation, but we have, I think, what, 12 games left now and, you know, every point matters. So yeah. it's, it's, this is the best time of the year. And I, I'm not going to make you talk about that for a long time because I know you guys are locked in, but what's, what's that vibe? Like, obviously you guys are grinding, you know, it's a very real possibility of as good of a chance to get into the playoffs as, as anyone really of those, of those kind of bottom yeah four teams but like what's the vibe do you guys feel good or are you, are you is it something that's on your mind every game or are you guys just taking it shift at a time i mean it's th throughout the game obviously you're just worrying about playing right yeah. but i think um every day you're you're looking at the at the standings and the schedule and seeing who yeah. wins uh i think like what yesterday winnipeg and nashville played and of course it goes into overtime or shootout whatever it was mm -hmm. and it's like literally a worst case scenario and then 
um, you know, we have a tough game against Dallas, a really good team, and we end up losing in overtime. It's like, it's just like the the shit like that that's kind of happened this year, and um, the bounces we've been getting. It it just it doesn't almost feel real, but it almost feels like if we can like sneak in the playoffs, we can you know do some damage. Hell yeah! Uh, going back to Sutz real quick, just because I'm so interested in him, <clears throat> it feels like to me this guy in Calgary, right? Like he coached down in L.A. He's the driest, funniest guy you've ever seen whenever you watch an interview. He seems like a pig in shit in Calgary. Like, it's like the perfect place for him, obviously. Yeah. Do, do you guys get that vibe? Like, does he seem... I don't even know what it would look like to see him happy. What is that like? Do you see him happy ever? Is he all business all the time? Is he kind of this... He To, to me, it's, he feels like the Bill Belichick of the NHL. For sure. Uh, you know, I've obviously, I've seen him at his ha- happiest in the sports world. Yeah. Um, obviously winning and, and everything, but... Um, he, he loves, he loves his players. He he cares about us more than anybody. And, um, outside of the rink, you know, I, I, I've told the story a million times to people, but, um, there was one practice where he shit on me the entire practice, (laughs) the entire day. And I'm, was it like, was it warranted? Was it random? Were you like, what the hell? I was a younger guy and I, whatever, if I wasn't playing well, I don't remember. Obviously I wasn't. Yeah. And I think he asked me if I want to be an NHL player, like an AHL All Star, the rest of my career, like something like that. And he was just like, all day, it's such a dig. It's like, oh, all day. I'm like, what the fuck, because like that day or the day before, I like just got announced that I was the AHL All Star, Rookie of the Year, whatever yeah, yeah. it was. And and so he's like doing all this stuff, saying all these things, and and I tell Cat, I'm like, I got, I gotta go for a walk. Like, let's walk on the strand. Like, let's do whatever. And of course, we're walking, and I see his son Chris walking towards me. I'm like, "Oh shit, Daryl's coming!" <laughs> and I'm like, "I'm so scared." And then Daryl comes, and he says hi to Cat, and he's like, "Hey, Ty, how was your morning?" Like, but like sincere, whatever. He's the nicest guy. He's the nicest yeah. guy. Like outside of the <laughs> rink, and like if you were to see him out for dinner or whatever, he he's the nicest guy. But um, I thought you were gonna say he started chirping the way you were walking down the street. Oh no no like, no! Yeah, nice stride, Ty. <laughs> no, that family is the nicest. Family. Oh, they're yeah. they're awesome. Uh, Chris is awesome, and just like, um, you know, he he's at the end of the day, like he's he's my boss, and he's yeah, got, he's got a job to do, and um, I've been around long enough where I I understand it. If I'm not playing well, then somebody has to hold me accountable, and and that's him, and somebody's holding him accountable. So at the end of the sure. day, it's you know it's. It's a business, and um, it's to be expected. Does he surprise you ever anymore, or is it all just like it's, you know, every time he does something, you're like, ah, oh, that's Daryl. I've seen a lot of it, but uh, he has a couple one-liners that I, I hear, and I'm like, I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> like, guys, Put it in your like, back pocket. <clears throat> we're all like, we're watching video, and he says something. We're, like, guys are looking around. We're like trying not to laugh almost, but because we know if we laugh, he's just he's going to get even more angry at yeah. us. So we're like, oh, my God, what is this? Like, are we supposed to laugh yeah. here? <laughs> He feels like one of those guys who will drop something that you're like, I don't know if that was supposed to be funny. Or oh not. yeah, like it's you all, don't know how to react all the time. Speaking of Daryl's, actually, Dommy, this is for you too. Was Daryl Evans with the Kings when he you he was? Were? I just recently did a shoot with him. That has got to be the most interesting man I've ever met. My Papa Puck is his nickname. Or? He when he goes, I, it's Chop, right? Like everyone calls him Choppy. Choppy. He's so this guy for the listeners does an interview with us. He's wearing a full suit, like a sequin suit. Only suits for roller pants. Always. The eagle pants or whatever. <laughs> and then, and I'm curious if you ever saw this. He then goes out, puts on skates. He comes out, he's got no laces in his skates. When I got Did you draft- ever witness that? When I got drafted to the Kings, he was the skating coach. He was like a development coach. Yeah. He also did airport runs. So he was like picking all the development camp kids up. He was doing the the car run so he's going back and forth he i think he had five six jobs and he was on on tv he yeah. was doing literally everything and i don't he's not doing much of i don't think he's doing any of the skating stuff anymore with the players but um he was he had six seven jobs when i first came here. he still i think he drops jobs and gets a new one because he's still doing everything he's like cooking for everyone now too yeah. oh yeah choppy yeah, 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 choppy yeah, yeah. What was that? once once a week he has them? i went i went to one two weeks ago it was unbelievable and now he's doing He's doing a. Uh, he's trying to do five million jump ropes this year, yeah. which if, no, he, he can do he's it. He's a skating coach for the Junior Kings, I think. I think that's right. Yeah, but he's like the most fascinating guy I've ever yeah. seen in my life. So you got a lot of interesting Daryls in your life. Yes, I do. Pretty cool. Um, I'm I'm bummed. Chris, or my co-host, isn't here because this is in our. You know, following you as a player, truly not just saying this, but like always being like a huge admirer of your game, and then doing you know some research before you came on here. 
Uh, maybe the best thing we learned about you is that you have once said that Pavel Datsuk is your favorite player of all time. He's yeah, he's definitely up there. It was and dude, that's <clears throat> what's frustrating to me is that's rare. It's, because it's, Datsuk for me is like a, the most remarkable player ever and has always flown under the radar. Yeah, it's one of those things where I mean, growing up in Toronto, I always like admired like the Leafs players, like Matt Sundin. Sure. And, um, <clears throat> you can go down the line, like yeah, yeah. You know, like Darcy Tucker, you know, like yeah. guys like that. Just from being in Toronto, just the energy and everyone always talks about him. And then I think one of my first games playing um, in Detroit at the Joe, Datsuk somehow was behind the play in our zone, ended up stripping, I think it was Dwight King, goes forehand, backhand on Quickie, one of the best goalies in the league. And I'm like, I'm on the ice and I pick up a minus. I'm like, holy shit, that was like really cool. Yeah. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you, you like, can't even be mad at something like that. Especially in, in at the Joe too, I'm like looking around. My parents are there. And I'm like, this is like this is the NHL. Yeah, you know. So um, he was definitely, and that's at the end of his career. I can't even imagine, you know, what it was right? like when he was 30 years old and doing that stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, he was like, I, he he was the constant reminder of doing stuff that makes no sense. Oh, yeah. And it's like you're seeing a lot of guys do that type of stuff now, but it's. He was pulling those. I mean, it's something as simple as his shootout move. Oh yeah, like he would do it, and you'd be like, "What the fuck is that?" He like, created. How do you he do? He created this? half of the shootout. Hundred percent. It's yeah. insane. I feel like all the like uh, Suzuki did the little chip shot, and it's like people forget that Datsuk did that like six years yeah, ago. Yeah. So whenever you see that, that's like the first thing they say. Oh, he did the Datsuk. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Exactly. That's when you. That's when you know you do something pretty good. Yeah. It's so true. Um, switching up to out of hockey. This is something I was very interested in asking you about. In again, my psychotic research of you, scouring your Twitter <clears throat> years ago, ten years I think maybe. Why am I nervous? Oh, <laughs> you tweeted, "I wonder what would have happened if Harry Potter wasn't a Gryffindor." Isn't that? Did I tweet? Because that's a, that's that's a fact. <laughs> it's a very what if very... he was uh, Slytherin? Okay, so. <laughs> But was he? You're kind of answering my. No, he was a group, but it was a big deal. Like the sorting hat. Well, the, was like, the sorting hat. You know, there was a little. Slytherin moment. Like, it was. It was almost Slytherin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So you're kind of. Are you already answering the question I haven't even asked? Was that a random like sitting on the couch having a few beers thought, or are you a Potter guy? I love Harry Potter. Okay. Like I'm a... so glad. So my our, my our... school used to. We used to go on. We we would read the book, uh -huh. and then we'd go to the movie, and then we'd write movie reports. Also, shout out to your mom. Who's like the <clears> oh, my mom's Potter like Potter diehard. Fan. I feel like it's big in your family. Oh, yeah. My mom is, uh, what are those? Uh... I'm so, we have another producer, Emily, who, <clears throat> it's it's alarming how often Harry Potter comes up on this hockey podcast, because Chris and I love Harry Potter. It's a big Canadian. What are those, like? Uh, Emily uh, hates it, and I'm uh, glad Emily's not here right now, because she'd be yelling at Tanner, us. Tanner Pearson, and yeah. you talk about it sometimes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, oh what are those, like, cartoon uh, things, like this, something pop on it? Um, oh, I know exactly what you're like, talking little, about. like, little, like, pop art. Yeah, like, they're, like, the big headed yeah, little My mom has them all. Really? All of the Harry Potter ones. Okay, so did your mom get you into it? It was honestly, I, I want to say it was just like school and your mom. School and my mom, and then. But then Tanner and you, like, literally, we have a group chat with Tanner Pearson and his wife, and like sometimes you guys talk about Harry Potter. Oh, but it's Why? always what on TV. Like yeah, whenever it's amazing. Like, like a rainy Sunday, and you yeah. throw Harry Potter on. Well, like not even let's not even talk like during the holidays. Like it's a Christmas movie. Like, I they're just I think... marathoning, and you're like, yeah, oh, what a I, great I, excuse to not it, do anything. If for people five say days. if people say Die Hard's a Christmas movie, and then Harry Potter is a Christmas. A hundred percent agree. There's a Christmas moment <laughs> and or scene in every Harry Potter. One hundred percent, unbelievable. Uh, so do you have a theory? What do you think? What if he wasn't, what if he was in Slytherin? I think things go much differently. 100%. Trying to think. You haven't been shit in a while. There was a time. I'm, I'm, if there's anything I'm hoping is that you guys go home and you're like, let's oh, just throw on sure. Harry Potter. I, well, I'm not on this train. <laughs> Wait, you, Kat, you don't it like it? No, it's fine. I just like don't like, it's, I'm not like it's passionate. It's fine? I'm not passionate. We also went to Universal to the rides and we got stuck. On the ride, oh, yeah, because it was still that new. might have turned Ty off of watching it for a while. We got stuck like upside down on that ride, and it's inside, yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's like, like yeah. the 3D one, too. Yeah, so, it's so like nauseating. it seems so yeah. cool, it seems so cool when you're like going through it, but you when the really lights turn on and you're, you're yeah, like, and the, the screen's like, off, right? You're like, oh, this is kind of gross in here. Yeah, <laughs> we were literally upside down, uh, like right when like the what, what, what are those things? The, the dementors, the, the, yeah, dementors the dementors were coming towards I, us. I was on it last week. We got stuck up, like literally upside down for a couple minutes. Yeah. And I don't think you've talked about it. Yeah, Harry with the Potter lights on, it's it's kind of gross. That's yeah. horrible. Oh, yeah. And it's one of those rides, too. It's like, <laughs> it's just the screen and it's just the sensation. Like, you feel like you're flying. 
But yeah, the second that turns off, you're like, oh, I'm just in like a shitty cellar. And it was upside also like down. A, it was like upside a two-hour wait to go on it too. And oh, yeah, it was like, yeah. God, that's a Once you're upside down with the lights on, it's like <laughs> yeah. the magic went away, I think. So were you in middle school and like the, you guys are going, that's like the coolest school trip I've ever heard in my yeah, entire I think, life. I think to go to the like, movies. Oh, when was the first one? Um, I think I was like grade five, six, seven. Yeah, yeah. Like around It was there. the same for me. I was like, I yeah. remember, I mean, you went to the movie. That's pretty cool. Like I had teachers in like fourth grade reading that shit to me and i yeah, was I like think, my entire know. world changed it was actually. like it was like 20 bucks to get the ticket and then you get like the the popcorn the kit kat and a little coke <laughs> and it was all it was all it was all one and it was just the best it was the best day of the year yeah it's incredible <laughs> um teddy just texted me by the way and said tell ty not to blow it <laughs> that's his advice for you that's good at, you know what i I like listening to Ted. That's what I was going to say. That's, I think that's what, if we would expect Teddy to say anything. So. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. We're going to, I'm going to transition you into a game we play with every guest. Okay. It's called Pass, Shoot, Score. It's essentially just a ranking system. So it's like passing. Sure. We love passing the puck around, getting some assists. Shoot. Next step up, trying to score goals and then score ultimate goal. Okay. Trying to light the lamp, right? So it's basically just <clears throat> things that you like. So in kind of topical things we've talked about with you bouncing around, no bias here. Canadian markets that you've played for, talking fans, talking the barn, talking just the general vibe of the city, Montreal, Vancouver, Calgary. It's definitely tough because, <clears throat> I mean, Montreal, we didn't have fans majority of the time I was there. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you might be the only person who has <clears throat> ever played for the Canadians who didn't really experience yeah. the full force of, yeah. of the fans. <laughs> like, honestly, though. Yeah. Like, no, honest to God. Like, it's... <laughs> I think, um, and I'm not just saying this because I'm on Calgary now and whatever. I, it's honestly a, like a tie between the two. Uh -huh. So if you want to shoot for both of them, because it, um, it was one of those things in the playoffs in Calgary, it was nuts. Like the yeah. Saddle Dome. I bet. Literally felt like it was going to fall down, which there's. It might. <laughs> you know, there, there, there were. We're not ruling that no, out. That totally no, there, might happen. There, there are. You know, there's stuff falling and whatever. It's yeah. known. It's a known thing. Um, and I, and so I, w I was in Vancouver for such a short period of time. So I'll yeah. just say pass on Vancouver. But, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a tie with Montreal and, and Calgary. Yeah. Okay. Does Montreal kind of still hold a special place in your heart? For sure. It, it, I mean, just. I know it does for you. It does. Yeah. <clears throat> just. Um, you know, because I lived right there and, and walking to the games and stuff, it was like fans outside were crazy. And I'm like, all these people are crowded outside. Why can't they just come in? The night, well, the, so right before he would go to games, I would open up the window and he would hear the fan chant. And it was like so overwhelming and they couldn't go inside and it was devastating. Yeah. yeah. But like we lived above the Bell Center that first, that during that Stanley Cup run. And it was like so cool. Yeah. Like it was it was echoing throughout the entire city. So. Yeah. What is the vibe like in Calgary for you as a player because LA is so interesting because I feel like everyone we've talked to, you know, <clears throat> loves playing in LA. And then you talk to guys like uh Fiala right now is, you know, an all-star mm -hmm. and he's but even him, he he walks around and no one notices him and talk to Cartsy and Teddy and it's like not like anyone would notice a guy like Teddy anyway, but <laughs> they're like, yeah, you kind of fly under the radar. In Calgary, do you kind of feel like more of a celebrity or more people kind of attuned to who you are, what's going on? Or does that have a similar vibe where you're like, no, I'm just part of this community can kind of bounce around? Yeah, definitely get noticed, noticed more. But yeah. at the same time, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm not going out as much as I obviously did in LA. So it's yeah. like, I'm not putting myself in that situation, but um, at dinners and stuff, there might be one or two people that kind of come up to me, but, um, whereas in LA you go to North end for six hours and nobody knows who you are. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, true. yeah, it's, it's, it's all good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, kicking into some entertainment stuff here. We're going TV shows, pass shoot score, game of Thrones, true detective season one and Fargo season one. So go past game of Thrones. Oof, okay, I've got follow-up um, questions for that. <clears throat> shoot Fargo because I Fargo is funny. Sick, yeah, Fargo is awesome. True Detective season one score that that it's got to be up there as maybe best of all time. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And then season two it was such a let, let down. I know, it's, <laughs> it's so like it was actually devastating. Okay, well, wait, why Game of Thrones passing? Well, did the end piss you off? Well, so I 
Kat and I, we started watching the first episode, uh-huh. and she had a hard time getting through the first episode, so we didn't watch it together. So I was, the horse died right away. Yeah, it was really super. <laughs> it was super gory, right? Like there was all that stuff going on. Oh, oh my An god! Oh, I'm dying got, right in the beginning. Kat, I've got bad news for you. It gets way worse. Yeah, like, yeah. don't don't so, ever watch that show if so you didn't like the horse dying an and animal stuff. die right. Oh off my god! Yeah. So and then I and then I watched a little bit more and then. I was just on and off, so I was like missing a couple episodes and then yeah. coming back, and I just like didn't fully commit to it. Um, so that's just, that's the only reason. Okay, but well, from what I watched, I really enjoyed. Dude, it. I gotta say, it's given what the other stuff you like, it sounds like we have similar taste. That is maybe the best show yeah. of all time. And so I, I'm, I'm Cat, watching. Cat, don't watch it. I don't want to see animals. I die. like I, I I'm, for that reason alone, do not watch yeah, that I show. Like it's it. yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, it gets we worse. We like to watch shows together. So I started well. sitting with uh, Dylan Dubé on uh, on the flights, so. We've been watching movies and stuff, and I brought it up. I'm like, maybe we like restart Game of Thrones because obviously our travel is. Yeah, insane. you got tons of time. And um, <clears throat> he was like, yeah, maybe we'll, maybe next season we'll we'll start it up because I think we only have two more trips left. And, yeah, but um, yeah, that's the only reason for uh, for the game. Okay, of that's fair. I'll accept <laughs> that. What are you guys watching now? Uh, Ty loves Top Chef. It just started again. I do so. watch the Top Chef. Yeah, we're gonna get into that. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> <clears throat> Anything else? You guys don't like any scripted show right now? Uh, what have we been watching? I don't even know. Like, I mean, I have my, we kind of are separate right now on things. What I watch? I watch the golf, the golf thing on Netflix. Yep. Uh, full yeah. swing. Full That's swing. good. And then I watch the Formula One. Um, but other than that, I haven't watched a show in a minute. I might have to send you guys some stuff. There's some good <clears throat> shows on I mean, Real Netflix. Housewives people, of Miami, I'm trying people to get People send us stuff all the time and they're like, you have to watch this. <laughs> And then it's like five what's, seasons. Well, what's, like, the, what uh, the what's, what's the what's uh, what's the the one the soccer um, one? Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. Yeah, it just came back. A buddy of mine has told me to watch it for years now. I'm yeah. like, I I can't like I can't get into it. I don't know why. Oh really? Like I just like I don't like it's not like I can't get into it. I I can't like start it for whatever reason. Yeah, I mean I get it. I'm some when someone sends me something that's like. Oh, this show is incredible! You gotta check it out. And then I look it up, and there's seven seasons of yeah. it. I'm like, I what? In what world do you you're think thinking, I am? You're thinking in your head, you're like, wow, that's that's a lot of it's a that's lot. a lot of hours. It's a lot to commit. And then the worst is if you watch it and you do love it, and you're like, oh great, I have to watch this and show every night for the next seven months and now. Then you it's, it. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Okay, going to movies. Pass shoot score. <clears throat> Blades of Glory. <laughs> Casino Royale. And Lincoln Lawyer. That's insane. Um... <laughs> Casino Royale pass, just because there's you, there's it's all the same, right? It's you can watch the, the it's the same movie almost essentially. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Blades you. of Glory two, or really? Oh or wow! Shoot, yeah. It's it's funny. It, it, it's it's really funny. Yeah. And then I think score Lincoln Lawyer. I just watched it the other day on the plane. Really? So it's. So uh, I I saw that you like that movie pumps me up. Yeah, that movie is so underrated. It has so it has so much going on, and it's like you're on edge. And yeah, hundred percent. It's also people forget that movie is actually what started the McConaissance. So many people are like, <laughs> I'm telling you, Tommy, don't laugh. I've never heard that. So movie. many people were like, it was you know Interstellar and True Detective and all, but it's like the Lincoln Lawyer lawyer is what started it all. And you can watch, you can keep watching it too. Like you don't. Yeah, yeah uh, that's a very rewatchable movie. Um, all right, going to some activities here. Surfing, golfing, and playing ping pong. So pass on the surfing because I can hardly swim. You tried with Tanner <clears throat> one time, though. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's like a really stormy day. And like, <laughs> honestly, honestly. We went, we oh, wait, with... so hold on. I, I see you guys like going down to Mexico all the time, and we're, you're putting all these surf oh. emojis in there. You're not surfing, though. In the pool. Okay. <laughs> no, but you did try okay. one time. Yeah, you was, tried to was, do like a was, foam board lesson with Tanner. No, it was Pierce and, and Nelson Emerson. I, so I, he's, <laughs> I think he's the assistant GM of the Kings now. And so the waves were not like crazy, but like it was just like pushing us down. I swear to God, we started in Manhattan. And I ended up in El Porto. <laughs> <clears throat> Pierce and I looked up. We're like, we got to get out of the water. Yeah. We ended up walking like. 30 minutes to get back to where we started. I'm so yeah, yeah. shocked that the two of you like decided to do this like one day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I would, I would um, shoot golf. Just, I, I like golf. It's, it's a long day though. And oh, it's golfing so in much. LA too. I'm like, I'm like begging Ted. I'm like, Ted, can I go golfing with you? Like, yeah. do you have an extra spot there yeah. at, uh, at the course? And he goes, ah, absolutely. And then, you know, you're having a couple cocktails and then I'm coming home and cats yelling at me. Cause yeah. 
<laughs> like I One said, it's a long day. Another with Ted, especially. <clears throat> See, I beg Ted to go golfing, and he's always like, "Yeah, yeah, for sure." And then he goes, "That's it." <laughs> yeah, how, yeah. There now, I know who's the reason I'm not getting out there. And then you score ping pong because ping pong is it's awesome. Uh, there was one summer we had a table at the house, and um, I played every weekend. Played a lot. And with you Jack can, Campbell. yeah, you, with Jack Campbell, and you can you can make some fun drinking games with it too. So, oh yeah, it's like a nice little you, you know pre-drink really to good. going out too. So Jack and I had a lot of fun one summer. Do you not have a table anymore? No, it's uh, still we there. We broke it. It's no, oh. it's still there. It's no, just but it's pulled. broken. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you break it? I think Jack broke it. Okay. Was this a frustrated loss break or was this a drunken situation? Both. Bill's I think, I think it was situation. both. It was both. <laughs> okay. Yeah, things things got. Yeah, it got interesting in the garage. No, I think it was like trying to like fold it back up again and like, things got complicated. Yeah. I mean, all those levers. <laughs> if you've had a couple drinks, it's yeah. a lot. Yeah. I, I get it. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned Top Chef. You're a big Top Chef guy. Do you just like the show or do you like to cook? Is it a combination? What's the deal here? I think I like the concept of the show and it's it's just like entertaining. It's fun. Um, you like food? I I enjoy food. Um, I would hope so. It's You're fun. A human being. Just like that the concept of, of them going around to different cities and, and cooking in different places and seeing the different cuisines and all that stuff. Um, do I look, do I like cooking? It's, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Kat enjoys cooking and, okay. and, and all that. But um, when I can get on the barbecue and stuff, I feel like I can make a nice steak every once in a while. All right. Are you two more of a order out, go out No, we couple? like to cook a lot. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of just play by ear almost like we do like to cook and um but it's also easy when when you live in manhattan beach in the summer and you yeah. walk down to nick's or strand house or <laughs> wh wherever else we go i don't even yeah it's a lot of good options um okay so on that topic your last past you'd score going foods crunchy peanut butter and banana sandwiches cupcakes which i have a lot of questions for you about <laughs> and then this last one might be a shot in the dark because i don't know if you've been here but believe it or not, I've been to Scarborough and I went to a place called the Art of Barbecue, Love which was maybe there. the best barbecue spot I've ever been to. And then I went to another place, the whole little Bavaria, like village in Scarborough. And I wanted to know if you've been to either of those. I have not. I have not. Honestly, when I was growing up, I, we didn't leave Scarborough a whole lot. The okay. only time we really left was to go play hockey and then, yep. and then make your way back home. So that's why... You know, people always ask like, why I don't like to go back to Toronto or Scarborough and stuff. It's like, no, I I, I enjoy going back because obviously I love seeing my, sure. my family. But other than that, like, I don't really have the you know the memories of like going to all these places because obviously the, the the food scene is yeah, it's crazy, top notch in, yeah. in Toronto, right? But um, I have not been to either. Of those okay, places. well, we'll nix those. So now it's just a head to head between the other two. Um, I would say. I mean, cupcakes, I got to... If you don't say cupcake, that was your nickname. No, I know. LA. I got a score, but I've kind of grown out of it. <laughs> I, so I it's literally your nickname here. I, I understand that, but I, I can't... <laughs> Hold I can't on. Eat. We can't skate by I, that. We I can't, can't skate I by can't, that. I can't eat six cupcakes at a time anymore like I used to. You, Fair. you had cupcake trackers. <clears throat> On, fans were making every goal would be a cupcake tracker, like, like a no, candy I under, cane lane. I understand that. Yeah. Who but, nicknamed you Cupcake? I, I, I think it was... You ha he I did a thing with Tanner. Thing. No, I did a thing with Tanner, though, before the season. Well, Dami w was working it. Because you, you said, <laughs> they said, they, they said, what's your, it was you and Tanner, and it was like a this or that. And they said, what's your favorite treat? And you had this little devil smile, and you said, cupcakes. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're really, like, weird. I was 22 years old, and I could eat. I was yeah. really excited. We did a, we did a promo sprinkles. with sprinkles, sprinkles during the class. Yeah. And we put your face on His all His face then, emoji on it. Okay. That was cool, too. All right. That was, that was cool. a nice cupcake. That was a nice cupcake. So, but here's my follow-up question. So, you do like cupcakes. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Because Ty, hold on, Ty. No, it's that wasn't you've that wasn't done, a, that wasn't a false front. You've done multiple <laughs> interviews where you've been like, I actually don't like cupcakes that much. Okay, you know? I think that was like passive aggressive. Okay, all right. This is what we just. So like, it's not a love any. It's not a love anymore. Okay, it's, okay. It's a well, like. Brian and I were talking about this like earlier, now. and I was like, I legitimately need to know. Like, do you actually like them or not? But here we go. I get it. Listen. I think after all the emojis you had to see it. on Twitter, yeah, and yeah, like yeah. there were a lot of like, like it was an overdose it was of an, cupcakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you got to put that as a score, though. Yeah, the guy. I Do you have a favorite <laughs> cupcake? Like, what, what's your? Spot? Uh, it used to be Red Velvet. Oh, favorite place? You actually, well, now I need both. Like, what type? And also, do you do the? Uh, do you do the sandwich move? No, I don't. I just 
Yeah, you just dive right in. Two, three bites, and it's all over my face. And <laughs> yeah. Make it work. Yeah. Um, when I was here, I, I definitely, Sprinkles was obviously really good. Um, what was the Susie Cakes? Yeah, you like Susie Cakes. Susie Cakes is Susie Cakes good, but that's a lot of sugar and oh butter. Oh, my God. And you have one, and you're like, oh, baby. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. That weighs you down big time. Your, right. your cupcake at Sprinkles, though, was like the rainbow sprinkles. I think it was chocolate, maybe, too. Yeah. I can't Wait, remember. you had a signature cupcake at Sprinkles? It was just like, it was just like th- it was for like the a, playoffs, for, for, the, for playoffs. the King's yeah. Foundation or so whatever it was. Like uh, <clears throat> I think it was 2015. Yeah, it, when we yeah, lost to only... San Jose, I think. That's yeah. up there, too, though. I mean, we got a home run at Dodger Stadium. They sold a signature space Signature Sprinkles on Sprinkle. cupcake. Yeah, like, yeah. that's pretty legit. I don't, I don't think they made a lot of sales on it, though. Well, you know. I bought a lot. We don't know or not know <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you had a cupcake. Exactly. So that's pretty we'll huge. All right. So we're going to score a cupcake. I love it. All right. Well, Ty, we've taken up over an hour of your time here. Uh, I'm going to let you go. But before that, is there anything you want to plug? Anything you want to say? Anything you want to shout out before we bounce out of here? No, this is, this is awesome. I haven't done anything like this before. So oh, wow. uh, doing this is, is pretty cool. Dude, I mean, we're so pumped to have you. And now that I know from talking with Kat, you guys are here a lot. It's a bad news for you. We might have to pull you in. Yeah, only if Ted comes though. Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. So actually. we'll do it with Ted, and then we'll we'll. Because we have confirmation Ted is in the second season's over, so we'll get you both wrapped yeah. in in the summer. We'll, we'll do that with Ted, and then we'll only be able to air five percent of it. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, get ready. That's going to be a lot of edits if we're being yeah. honest. <laughs> All right. Well, dude, thank you so much. Awesome. This has been absolutely awesome. Thank you. For sure. What do you think about Tyler Tafoli? What a guy. It was so nice to meet him. <laughs> I I I won't lie. We we did some hanging, hard hard hard, hard hardcore hanging Dude. after that that episode, and I felt so bad for you because I, I was like, this this is the type of thing that old FOMO CP slits his wrist in a bathtub about. Well, first of all, I have extreme FOMO, so no shots there. No, I'm not I, taking offense there, but that is a ridiculous thing to be chirped about for it's not a chirp i'm just saying i know like you especially that bothers yeah i would say anyone especially that would bother yeah i mean he's the man but yeah. i'm saying I've, I've i'm not this isn't a chirp i'm 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 apologizing yeah it's weird because since we do a lot of the interview prep together I didn't feel, even though you were doing the interview alone, I was like, I don't feel that left out of this because I, I yeah, was so I, involved I know all about him. with the yeah. thing. And then I found out you guys had beers after and I was like, I'm going to kill myself. Yeah. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Colum, Colum, Cartagena. 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 Yeah, he was in Cartagena. Okay. Um, all right, let's get into some of our regular, regularly scheduled segments to close out this episode. What's going on with Jack Eichel? A little bit of Storm Alert Eichel Watch. Yes. Nice. Uh, Dan, he's got 54 points in 57 games. He did fall off pace a little bit. He was sure. very quiet while I was gone. He had one point in four games. I was, I, I was going to mention, do you know that it was, uh, but you just said it. You left the country and he got cold. Yep. Because you let your guard down. You thought it was fine. He was ripping at a point per game for like four games in a row, and you left, and he went cold. It's my fault. Yeah. Uh, but that's nothing the Columbus Blue Jackets can't fix. <laughs> because he had a nice little hattie for the fellas. Here we go. Here we go. You needed that. I needed it in a bad way. Um, but, Jack, I'm talking to you here, buddy. It's go time. We need 18 points in 12 games. And to be honest, oh, Dan, yeah, looks like old, I think I'm in trouble. Looks like old Danny boy is not going to be eating shrimp anytime soon. I know you've got something prepared coming up in one of our weekly segments, and I fear I'm admitting to you that I fear I'm going to have to prepare one of those. Yeah, shortly. Um, but I'm back in the country. I'm back on his side. Get hot, Jack. It's doable. It is. He's got to get red hot, though. Yep. I mean that that'll probably be have to be the hottest he's been all season. Probably in his career. Oh, yeah. Do you think I'm he's gone so on an 18 point in 12 There's, games I, in his I career? Not, Maybe. I could not feel more safe. If he has one game, one, in the next 12, where he doesn't have a point, he's at least, he's, it's over. So, so yeah, it's a bad bet. No, maybe not. But I was going to say, wow, you're waving the towel already? But, yeah, that's tough. Normally, this is the part in the show where we would do Where in the World is Austin Matthews. We don't need to do that. Austin is 
cruising right along. He's he is well, well, well above point per game. Uh, Toronto looks great, so good job, Austin. What I would very much not like to do. <laughs> you never like to do these. But what I have to do right now is make a statement. That you're mad at me? Nope. No. Oh. This is I, serious. I have a prepared statement. Oh, no. Uh, it genuinely, I'm, I'm like, I'm very upset and I'm very sad. But I am here to say to all of the loyal listeners, I acknowledge and admit that the Buffalo Sabres are not going to make the playoffs. Ooh. The playoff trail. They are no longer a wagon. Has sunk. The wagon I would like crashed. to say something. I have a speech. Oh, my God. <clears throat> you should have told me you prepared this. I would have not come in here today. When speaking of a lost loved one, the thing we too often find ourselves feeling is that we didn't have enough time. There can be endless memories, laughs, tears, come from behind wins, breakout seasons, historic hat tricks, and yet it will never feel like it was enough. You want more. Even now, when you know they're gone, you can't help but reach out for their warm embrace. Today, we're saying goodbye. I personally didn't think I'd be sitting here today having to read you all this message. I thought we had many more weeks, perhaps even months of celebrating together. Many of us became family this season. To the loyal group of Sabres fans who I joined arms with this year, I thank you. You welcomed me without a moment's hesitation. When we were riding high, the wind was whipping through our hair as one. And when the wagon lost wheels, we got our hands dirty together to get back on the trail. Today we acknowledge, sadly, and for many of us, unexpectedly, that the Sabres playoff trail has come to an end. We have dysentery. We've starved. We have a lack of warm clothing in the winter storms. And we have snake bites. <laughs> but as I look back at the path we've forged forward on, I have no regrets. Maybe not getting a goalie at the deadline is a regret. But I digress. While our trail stops here, there will be trails in the future. We will regroup. We will add depth. And we will see you all in the Stanley Cup playoffs in 2024. Farewell. That was beautiful. I'd like to say I'm sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> do they normally let the murderer give a eulogy? I thought that person usually goes to jail. Yeah. I will not sit here and say to my loyal and passionate fellow Sabres fans that I didn't jinx us many times. I did. But I think I also pushed the wagon forward many times. I got us through a big time overtime win against the Lightning. Just you? Nope. <laughs> Mostly the guys on the team. But I was well, there. And, and all the loyal fans. Yes. I think you all pushed them forward. I think we and all... And only you... I think it's hard to say that everyone jinx them while I jinx them. I, I, I might have been a solo jinxer a few times. Yeah. So I am sorry. But I am not sorry for being passionate. For loving. Yeah. And for loving them. For opening my heart. Um, but I, I, I can confidently sit here and say it's over. They're up. It's just, it looks too bleak. And I, I'm, I'm devastated, truly. But the Sabres are fourth back... They've got 72 points. They have one game in hand against Florida, and Florida has seven more points. All those like games it's just, in hand did not oh, pan out. And there, are, there were just some horrific, horrific losses. So that's that. The Sabres are out. Young team. Hell of a season. They'll be back. Yeah, oh, God. Dude, they're dangerous. Yeah, but I thought this was it. Me too. I, I, uh, I wanted more. No wonder you're so upset today. It's just, it had nothing to do with me. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, you didn't help. Great me. job, Dan. Sorry. Excellent speech. <laughs> Thanks for taking ownership for what you've done. It's, I, I appreciate you taking it easy with that in my time of, yep. uh, of depression. Let's relax. And let's get into some games to watch as we close out. Emily? I will start. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you giving me such a platform to share all the lovely games to watch this week. Hell yeah. Do you, does that mean you have multiple? No, I'm going to just share one because I got it. I got it. I can't take. I 
can't take the spotlight for too long, even though I am the star of the show. Mm-hmm. On March 25th, at 1 p.m. <laughs> Eastern. What day is that? It's going to be a Friday. That will be this Friday. It is important that you tune in to the Tampa Bay Lightning versus the Boston Bruins. I just think that they are both great teams, <laughs> and obviously the Bruins are better, but we don't know. We don't know what will happen. And I th- really think that it's important to look out for pasta, to look out for Hegel, mm. to look out for <laughs> Sergachev. Yes. That was good. To look out for Marchand. Yeah, wow. And to look out for this one I'm going to fuck up. I got this. I got this. I got this. Zalchik. Grizalchik. <laughs> Grizalchik. Oh, no, trying yeah. to say Grizzly. Yeah. <laughs> Grizzlick. Yeah. <laughs> no, it literally says Grizalchik. Yep. So. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You, you it. might be incorrect. Also, if you're going to compare goalies out here, you got to look at Olmark. You got to look at Vazilabetsky. <laughs> that actually was not horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't forget about our boy Swyman. So. Correct. That's true. Please I really tune like in. how when M doesn't know a name, she goes crazy. And I literally have a like, spasm. She yeah, becomes a like vampire. A... She's from Transylvania. Well, because yeah. I don't want to be confident in it. Yeah. Because I really <laughs> am not. Good evening. <laughs> I'm like Vasilevsky. <laughs> That's literally, <laughs> That's literally what, what that sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, man. next week. Next week. Next week, I'll have we'll have the Emily cam, so you can literally see my spasm. That's yeah. even better. I love it. That was, <laughs> that was a great game to watch. What do you got? I got two. You hit me. Did I steal any ones? No. No. Wow. Uh, mine are, uh, I'll sandwich M. Thursday, Rags Canes. Give me a break. That yeah, is just a. Rags are hot. That is a Met battle royale of massive implications. Mm-hmm. So huge, huge one to watch. And then on Saturday, you you gave a little tease of a potential playoff matchup, Vegas Edmonton. I uh, love that game. Oh, that's a great game. Because it's just the, the McDavid Eichel battle. Uh, I got Thursday when this drops. Toronto at Florida, big test for the Cats mm-hmm. if they want to stay in the playoffs. Saturday, I'm giving you Jets at Kings because I actually think this is also going to be a first round matchup because I think the Kings are going to win that division and catch the last wild card team. No, oh, I like that call. And then Caps at Pitt, Ovi at Sid. I will always list this game until either they die or I do. I love it. Uh, it's late in the game to do it, but I'm going to say, guys, we love you so much. Do us a favor. Hit that like, subscribe, download buttons, follow us on YouTube, rate Instagram. Rate five stars. Rate five stars. Give us that funny rating with the chirps in it, like we said. We love that stuff. Uh, this is uh, the best community in the world, and we want to keep growing with you. So we love you guys. For us, that is it this week at the Empty Nerds Podcast. And until next week, skate hard. Skate hard. Watch some hockey. <laughs> <laughs>